This is a motorized camera slider from Newer, a company that specializes in all types of camera accessories, from soft boxes to camera cages and tripods. It allows you to take shots like these. My experience with this brand has been great. They seem to have some really premium products at reasonable cost, and they come up with some interesting products. The DL300 is the upgraded version from the DL200, which comes in three wheels, available on Amazon and Newear website, and retailing for around 173 US dollars at the time of posting this video. Is it worth it? Let's find out. This is what you get in the box. A phone holder, 8 extra rubber feet, an action camera or GoPro mount, a mini ball head, a manual with links to the app and of course the slider itself. My first impression is that it's built well. It's heavy with all metal built and it feels very solid. You can feel the quality just by holding it. The actual weight of the item almost matches what's on the manual. It weighs in at about 887 grams versus 895 grams as indicated in the user manual. It's important for me to know the weight so I can estimate its load and it's usually a good indication of the quality and consistency of the mass production. If they are able to keep the product at a consistent weight, it usually means the company has a good assembly line and quality control. It has a smooth, somewhat matte finish that's fingerprints resistant and the black color is actually really nice compared to some others that I have seen online. The buttons are also made of metal and feel really nice and clicky. There's a very audible clicky noise to them, and you can clearly tell the difference when you click them. This is not only an aesthetic choice, but it's actually helpful. Sometimes the buttons will be blocked depending on your camera position, and having a clicky sound lets you know whether you pressed it or not. The hinge in the middle requires a fair amount of force to adjust, indicating that it won't come loose while in operation. It has a simple LED screen that displays the speed level and uses four light indicators to show the battery level. Now let's talk about specifications. It can carry up to 3 kgs, which is more than enough to carry a DSLR, a decent size lens and some light accessories like a mic or a light. It can be operated remotely via an app and connect via Bluetooth. The hinge in the middle can be adjusted from 45 to 120 degrees for a circular or a straight shot. Out of the four wheels, only one that actually moves, but it's enough to drive the slider and has not drifted during my use, meaning it remains in a straight line when configured to do so. How to use it? Well, it's simple as it gets four buttons on the device, forward, backward, speed control from one to five, and one on and off switch. The on and off switch doubles as a stop button when you're using the slider. It charges via USB type C and has a 2.5 millimeter port to connect your camera for time-lapse shots, which is not included in the box and need to be bought separately. You can also use it via an app, which is available on iOS and Android. The slider connects to your phone via Bluetooth and can be operated remotely. The use of the app offers additional features like choosing the distance you want the slider to travel or the amount of time you want it to move. On the device itself, to turn it on, you click and hold the power button. This will not only turn on the device, but it will also make it visible 
on the device list in your app. The forward and back button will start the movement and stop it at the same time, meaning you click forward to move and click forward again to stop. And the speed control goes in increments of one, from one to five. And it reverts back to the slowest speed once you reach the top speed. Now let me share some tips on how to use it. There's a lot, but I will share only my favorites. Since you can't do up and down shots and restrict it to horizontal movements only, use this simple trick. Place your product sideways and keep the camera close to block the background. This will give you the impression that the camera is moving up or down instead of side to side. For smooth shots, use the same button you use to start the device with to stop it as well. This will give you a slow, smooth stop. Always go for dry runs before starting to record. This will help you to center your object. It is especially important for those circular shots. If you don't set it up, you will end up with the object drifting to the left or right. For the best mounting solution and to avoid tipping over, use a camera cage. This will help you offset the center of the weight to the back and allow you to use bigger lenses. Use a macro lens for product showcasing. The closer you are to the subject, the easier it is and less space you need to film. So who is it for? Newer says that it's for filmmaking, vlogging, food videos, and time-lapse videos. I can agree with that. Personally, I use it to add some much-needed action to my videos. It ups the quality of my videos. Some of the shots you see here can be done via software, but it just takes more work. As a small YouTube channel owner, I don't have time to sit and edit for hours. So if I can cut corners somehow without spending a lot of money, I will do it and this device fits the requirements. The first video I posted on YouTube utilized shots filmed with a camera on a dolly similar to the DL300. I ended up selling it thinking that I wasn't going to use it much, which I regretted later. Pros and cons. Let's talk about pros and cons. The one I will list here are for my use case, which is filming short videos for product showcasing. Depending on how you use it, you might end up with more pros and cons. Battery life. Battery life is good. I filmed for almost half an hour and the battery indicator remained full. In addition to that, it goes to sleep after 10 minutes of inactivity and turn itself off after 20 minutes of no use to further save battery life. It can carry a good amount of weight at 3 kgs. I have tested it with the Sony ZV-E10 with a camera cage and a Sigma lens and a couple of Ulanzi lights and it did just fine. The only issue I found was balance. The weight needs to be concentrated in the center for it not to tip over. However, there's no issue in carrying the actual weight itself. It's portable and can easily fit in your bag and it comes with its own case for travel and safekeeping. It's easy to set up. What made me want to pick this slider versus others is the ability to control it via a smartphone, which means you can use it remotely. Being a one-man show, this type of small features can act as a helping hand and make life easier. A small problem might occur if you want to use the same smartphone you control it with to shoot with, which is why it's nice to have the ability to control it straight from the device itself. Now let's talk about some cons. 
it needs to be on the same level and surface of the item you're filming versus a camera slider rail that can be mounted on a tripod for example. A camera slider with rails that's mounted on a tripod will be a lot more versatile and be able to take shots at a downward angle which the motorized slider here will not be able to achieve. Of course it comes at the expense of being portable and it takes time to set up. It has angle limitations. This one I found out about 30 minutes into my shooting. At first, I thought I ran out of battery. Upon closer inspection, I found out that it tipped over and the wheel was spinning in the air. This, however, will not be a problem if you're filming with a smartphone or action camera. It will only tip over if you have a weight imbalance or using a big lens. It needs a flat and smooth surface. Don't expect it to work on concrete or thick carpet. This might be a challenge for someone who wants to use it outside for time lapses. This will work best in a controlled environment or a professional setting. In the end, I'm quite happy with it. Having had a similar product and then not having it made me realize that this purchase will be useful and not just a waste of almost $200 for an item that will sit in the house and collect dust. Although I will only use it for about 5-10% to of my shots, it's an enough edge for me. It gives me that much needed camera angle change and some flair to what could be a boring video. If I change my mind in the future, I can always sell it. And for some reason, it seems to be doing well on the used market and sells fast. But for now, I'm keeping it. I have a video coming soon on the RTL SDR, which is a device to pick up air traffic signals and radio stations and can be used on your desktop. So stay tuned. If you lasted this long, thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you in the next video.